Earth, you got a copy. I don't know if you've had your coffee and correct grammar this morning, but if you haven't, let's get some in you. This is going to be hopefully part one of uh, closure on what a conjunction is and what it does. Um, I've been getting some questions about it. And this is going to be, uh, hopefully, something that will help those of you who don't know what a conjunction is or what it does or how to syntax it or even how to use it with correctness. So to start off with, I will give you, I will share with you my correct sentence structure, communication, finite mean of conjunction. So to give closure as to what I'm talking about when I say the word conjunction, for the conjunction of this finite mean is with this joinder of these two matters and or auxiliary matters with the quality of the bridge or of the connection with the words and terms of the and and of the or with this claim by this neutral location. And then backwards, for this neutral location of this claim is with the or and with the and of the words and terms with the connection or with the bridge of equality with these two matters and or with these auxiliary matters of this joinder with this finite mean by the conjunction. So, what is a conjunction in plain English? A conjunction in plain English is basically a neutral condition of state. That's why it's given the syntax value of zero. It is not modified by anything, nor does it modify anything. In correct sentence structure, it can be a bridge between sevens, or it can be a bridge between five, six, sevens. In other words, it can be a bridge between facts, or it can be a bridge between position, lodial, fact, phrases. In the fiction, it can be a bridge between adverbs, verbs, adjectives, pronouns, conjunctions, and it can also be a bridge between any of the five syntax scenarios. This is why when you syntax something, you have to pull back and look at the entire scenario as a whole. Basic judge mechanics. You can't just go into a document and uh, look at it and say, oh, I'm going to put a one here because it's a the. And I'm going to put a one here because it's an ly. No, that is not correct. That's going to get you into trouble. Or, I mean, I don't know if it will or it won't, but it could. You have to know what it is you're doing. I've had people come to me and say exactly what I just told you. Well, you put a one above the the and a one above the only. And my question would be, why would you do that without looking at the whole thing? And they would say, well, that's just the way it does it. You do it. That's the way David did it. That's the way Russell did it. So what? <laughs> it doesn't mean shit to me at this point. What means shit to me what has value to me is if you know what it is you're talking about and you don't appeal to an authority. I need to know from you why you're doing it. If you tell me that, then that tells me you don't know what you're talking about. Because now I got to go to David or Russell and say, why do you do it this way? And of course, you know, I don't think David's going to tell me anything and certainly not the other guy. So what I've done over the last few years is get my own closure and be able to certify that along with my tutor colon raven hyphen farhad hyphen tohidi colon efferin. But I provide evidence and sources for what I tell you. I don't tell you based on what someone else said. I tell you it based on what I know, what I say, and what I can prove and share with you. And it's up to you uh, whether you want to go and research it yourself. So the first scenario. The first and only, this sentence right here, 
how would you syntax this sentence? You notice we do have a conjunction here, but even still, you can't just go in here and put a zero over the and because you have to look at the whole scenario to understand what it is you're doing. So the way I teach syntax is you start at the end and work backwards. It's the most efficient and accurate way to do it. And I've certified this hundreds of times with students. So we have only. Is that tangible or non-tangible contract? Well, the dead giveaway is the LY. LY will poison a tangible contract word into a non-tangible contract word. So this is non-tangible. How about and? Is and tangible or non-tangible? I would say it's non-tangible. Again, you can look it up at Etymology Online. You can parse the word and you can find out for yourself. I, everything I say here, I can certify, qualify, prove, confirm, verify, all that stuff. It's up to you to do it. First, is that tangible or non-tangible? That is tangible. It's a location. How about the? Is the tangible or non-tangible? The is non-tangible. So we have non, non-tangible, and non. There's only one tangible contract word in this entire sentence. So to me, only is a verb, a dangling participle verb. And is a conjunction. First is a tangible contract verb because verbs can be either tangible or non-tangible. It's thinking. You can think whatever you want. And then the is non-tangible contract adverb. So we have adverb, verb, conjunction, dangling participle verb. The is a non-tangible contract adverb, modifying first into a verb, which is tangible contract in this case. And then you have this neutral conjunction, which is serving as a bridge in between these two verbs. The is modifying both first and only. And is simply a bridge between those two things, between those two verbs being modified by this, the. I know some people will say that this would be a one, two, zero, four, and they would say that this is a pronoun. But that is not correct if you have closure on what it is a conjunction does, what its function is, what its condition of state is. If a conjunction is neutral, if it does not modify nor is modified by anything, then this could not possibly be a pronoun because if this were a pronoun, then that would mean this is standing by itself and that the conjunction functions as a break in the continuance of the evidence, which it does not do. Therefore, one, two, zero, two. Now I'm gonna give you another scenario. The first and the only. Based upon what I said earlier in the video, how would you syntax this one? We have, again, as I pointed out up here, only is non-tangible contract. The is non-tangible contract. And is non-tangible contract. First is tangible contract and the is non-tangible contract. So how would this be syntax now? Only is a condition of state of non-tangibility, as is the and and the. First is tangible contract. So I'm just gonna ask, as we do have one individual here participating, what syntax value would you give only? Would it be an adverb, verb, adjective, or a pronoun? I'll wait a few seconds. Go ahead and feel free to guess.
Is it a one, two, three, or a four? As Rugen is the only individual participating, uh, my question is directed toward you. Adjective. I'm not asking you what it is. I'm asking you what syntax value would you give it? A one, two, three, or a four? Is it an adverb, verb, adjective, or pronoun? Argo Glass says adjective. That is not correct. Because an adjective is a modifier. It's something that colors things. So there's nothing left to modify or color here. So it would not be an adjective. Sentences and word groups will not end on modifiers. They won't end on adverbs and they won't end on adjectives. Ah, I just gave away, <laughs> I just gave one of them away. Well, anyways, it can only end on a two or a four. And no, it is not a four. Reason being, if it's a pronoun, then it would either have to stand by itself or be preceded by a tangible contract word, which the is non-tangible. So it would not be a four. Okay, I'm going to go through and syntax it, give you the answer. So it's adverb, verb, conjunction, adverb, dangling, participle, verb. Correct, K-H, whoever you are. Only is a non-tangible contract dangling participle verb being modified by the verb, I'm sorry, by the adverb, the. This conjunction is connecting what? It's a bridge between these two syntax scenarios. It's connecting these two adverb verb syntax scenarios. So this zero is actually connecting a one, two and a one, two. In the same sense that this one is connecting a two and a two, this is one, two and one, two. So here's the third and final one. How would you syntax this one? So as I said at the beginning, the way I teach syntax is to start at the end of a sentence and go through a specific series of steps so that you can be as accurate and efficient as possible. You have to zoom back and look at the whole thing. These are basic judge mechanics. You cannot go in and just say, oh, I see the word the, I'm gonna put a one here and a one here, and I see an L-Y, and I'm going to put a one here, and I see a, a conjunction, I'm going to put a zero there. It doesn't work that way. That's assuming things. You have to know what's going on here. These are judge mechanics. You have to establish knowledge. And if that's the way you syntax, then you are demonstrating a severe lack of knowledge. So one is tangible contract because it's a number, right? If I say to you, I would like one cup of coffee. You know exactly what I'm talking about. We have a tangible contract with that. Tangible contract only as we certified up here is non-tangible, does non-tangible, and is non-tangible. First is tangible because it's a location and the is non-tangible. What syntax value would you give the word one if we start at the end and work backwards? Hello, Sean. Sean, you are incorrect because the is an intangible contract. And if you watch my uh, videos on syntax, you will know that non-tangible contract words would not be syntaxed as adjectives. Only tangible contract words can be syntaxed as adjectives. 
12042. That is not correct. Because by the rules of syntax, nothing can follow a pronoun except for an adverb or a break in the continuance of the evidence. There is no 42 syntax scenario. One, two, zero. Hello, Razvan. You are not correct because only is non tangible. And just as I told Sean, non tangible contract words would not be syntaxed as adjectives. Only tangible contract words are syntaxed as adjectives. See, this is the type of stuff. I mean, this, this knowledge is contained on this YouTube channel. If you study the over 300 videos I have on here, it's contained here. But this is the main reason why people will engage me for the one-hour confidential workshops, because this is the stuff that I convey to them. And if you want to... If you want to apply for a workshop, email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. I'll set up a video consultation and we'll see if, uh, if that's something you want to do. 12024. 12042. You're missing a word there, KH. You only have five values. There are six words here. One, two, zero, one, two, four. Sean, tell me out of the five syntax patterns where there is a two, four syntax pattern. Show me which of the five syntax patterns has two, four in it. Man, I knew this was going to be a tough one. <laughs> And again, this is what I tell people. You have to know this grammar well enough to be able to teach someone else. And what I mean by that is when you're under duress, when you're put in a position where you have to hold a position, whether it's what other, any kind of vassali, whether it's a judge, police officer, military, whatever it is, if you're a TSA agent, if you're under duress, you have to be able to be calm, and be able to give closure to what it is you're doing and explain it to another individual in a comprehensive, cognizable form using a trade medium congruent with the other contract party. Because once you get angry, once you get frustrated, you're done. You've lost. And if you go in there and say, well, it's because Russell says so, well, you're probably going to get laughed at and thrown out and it's not going to turn out the way you want it to you have to know what it is you're doing here and here you have to know it to the depths of your bones one two zero one one two that is not correct because there is no scenario where a one would ever come next to another one in the five syntax scenarios there is no one one scenario and logically, an adverb would not modify another adverb because in that, what is an adverb? It's a no verb. It's a condition of state that's just transient. It doesn't even exist. It's a non-tangible condition of state. So there's not enough of it there to modify something else other than a verb or an adjective. So there is no one one scenario. And if you go to my syntax playlist, I give full closure to that as to why a one would never modify another one. And I also certify that with a couple of uh, videos from Colin David Ife and Wynn Colin Miller. Okay, so what I'm gonna do now to draw this to a close is to give the answer.
Are you ready? I'll give you another second to, uh, if anyone else has another guess. And then I'll give the answer. It's actually so simple <laughs> that you're probably going to laugh. That's interesting, Sean. Are you aware of what a conjunction is? There are two conjunctions, and and or. They would be syntaxed as zero. One is certainly not a conjunction. So that is not correct. Here's the answer. So we have non-tangible contract, the, as an adverb, modifying first into a tangible contract, verb. Then we have the conjunction, which is non-tangible, but it's zero and it's a neutral condition of state. So it is a bridge between these two verbs. Basically, it's this sentence, one, two, zero, two. One, two, zero, two. Only is non-tangible contract adverb modifying one, which is tangible contract, into a dangling participle verb. And what is a dangling participle verb? A verb is thinking. It's motion. If this is thinking, there's nothing left to think about, so it's just dangling there. That's why it's dangling participle verb. So in this scenario, the conjunction is connecting these two verbs being modified by this adverb. And then you have only one, which is a one, two. In this scenario, the conjunction is a bridge between adverb, verb, adverb, verb scenarios, which is a syntax scenario in the five syntax patterns. One, two, one, two. Same thing here. One, two, one, two. Same thing here. One, two. The conjunction in the first one is, is, is the same way in this one. It's this one. It's connecting these two. It's a bridge between these two verbs being modified by the. So that's the first mini class on the conjunction. I'm going to do several more where I get into other scenarios. This was a basic, very simple scenario. There are other more complex scenarios. And also, I'll go into the closure on how it works within a correct sentence structure. Which, to reiterate, the conjunction is a neutral condition of state. In correct sentence structure, it would be a bridge between two sevens, two or more sevens, actually, or a bridge between five, six sevens. So you could say, uh, for the claim and knowledge for the claim and knowledge that would be syntaxed as 56707 or you could say for the claim and for the knowledge which would be 5670567 5, so the incorrect sentence structure it would connect either two sevens or two five six sevens in the world of adverb verb adjective pronoun the conjunction would be a bridge or connect the modifications or the syntax patterns. It could come in between two ones, two twos, two threes, two fours, or it could come between two one twos, two one three fours, so on and so forth. That is the function of the conjunction. And if you are curious and would like to fast track your learning, You can email me at jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. And I'll set up a one-on-one -on -one 10 to 15 minute consultation, video consultation. I'll provide the venue and you can apply for a workshop. And this will fast track your learning 
because you'll have me as a guide. Of course, everything I teach in the workshops is available to the public in the 300 videos on my YouTube channel. Uh, there are no secrets or tricks. It's just the workshop is just like this. It's me giving you closure, bam, 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 right on the spot. Thank you for joining me. Thank you, Sean, for the kind words. I appreciate it. And I'll see you next time for the next Coffee and Correct Grammar. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it provided some clarity on the subjects mentioned. You can email me at the email address that's uh, been screened at the bottom of your picture for the whole video, jasonmatthewg17 at gmail.com. If you have any grammar questions, or if you wish to participate in a 10 to 15 minute video consult, or if you wish to apply for a correct grammar workshop, you can email me there. Uh, please like and subscribe to this channel and also my Coral Blade Grotto channel, if you'd like. And always remember that authority comes from knowledge and the skill in conveying that knowledge and closure. Thanks.